Hi everybody, welcome back. I'm Scotty, my co-host Cletus. I think he's feeling a little ornery today. So anyway, today we're going to do something uh, a little bit different. I've been asked uh, questions about how electricity works and, you know, I understand voltage, but what is current and blah, blah, blah. Uh, I've been asked these questions a lot, so... Um, I've decided to make a new series of videos called EEK, or EEK, uh, which, because I'm an engineer, it's an acronym, EEK, Electrical Engineering Class, with a K. Um, so this is the first video in the series, and I'm going to hope to explain in simple, practical terms what electricity is, how it works, in such a way that you don't actually have to understand all the crazy physics behind it, and all that kind of like nutty stuff where you've got, you know, crazy math and there are like four different definitions for voltage and it's, it all gets crazy. So um, this, this episode of Eek, um, the other, by the way, the other reason I'm calling it Eek is because that's usually what uh, people say when, you know, they look at like a circuit breaker panel or they say like, what are you doing? And they say, oh, I'm doing blah, 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 blah. And they kind of go, Eek! And then they run away. So uh, it's kind of an appropriate name as well. So, right, this video is going to be um, about... What's the name of the video again? <sighs> More coffee. Uh, ah, yes. Volts, amps, watts. Who's in charge? So, okay, let's start at the very beginning. Um, what is electricity? Okay. Now, when people see a wire, this is an electrical wire, electricity runs through it, right? Okay, everybody knows that. But usually when people think of a wire like this and they think, they, they know that electricity is flowing through it. What they think of is a lightning bolt. Yeah, there are a few problems with that because basically um, lightning... Okay, when you have lightning, you have a thunderstorm and you have clouds and the clouds are charged and then down on the ground you have uh, the earth which is also char electrically charged and in between the clouds and the ground you have uh, and air. So you have this massive charge separated by an insulator. Uh, of course, conductors carry electricity effectively. Insulators do not carry electricity efficiently, which is why you have a copper wire. The copper conducts electricity, but it's, co it's covered in this blue, uh, I think this is PVC type uh, insulator. The insulator does not conduct electricity, so when you touch it, you go Oh, I'm not getting electrocuted. Isn't that nice? So, you have your lightning bolt. Now, when the electric, ch the, the electric charge builds up to such a point that it's really, really big, what ends up happening is you get a, through the insulative air, a conductive path develops, and when the conditions are right, you get a giant electrical discharge, which goes or whatever. And what it looks like is bluey, whitey, purpley, uh, a bright, well, it looks like a lightning bolt, right? Uh, so we think that, well, electricity looks like a lightning bolt. But actually, no. Because the reason that a lightning bolt looks like a lightning bolt is because it creates uh, a conductive channel through the insulative air. And what you're actually, what you're seeing is like a purpley, whitey, bright flash. What you're hearing is um, this conductive path through the air being heated to 50,000 Kelvin, approximately, which is 49,000 degrees Celsius or 89,000 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's really hot. So you see the flash. You see this bright light. You hear the thunder because the, when, this, when the, the conductive path becomes superheated, it creates a sound wave. Kaboom! And you get thunder, right? So you see it. You hear it. Um, 
And if you're close enough to the lightning bolt, you can even smell it in the form of ozone, because this massive electrical discharge, blah, 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 right? So we think that electricity looks like a lightning bolt, but actually it doesn't, because what we see and hear and smell, and hopefully not touch or taste, is essentially the effects of the flow of electricity. It's not actually the electricity itself. Right, so now you're probably thinking, great, thanks, Scotty. So what the hell is electricity? What does it look like? And the answer is more or less that it doesn't really look like anything. Um, now, that may seem kind of bad, because you're like, well, at least I used to think that there's a wire and there's like lightning flowing through it, and now I've got like nothing. Hang on. So, the next question is, well, okay, so if it doesn't look like lightning, then w what exactly is electricity? And for that, we should look at what a conductor is and what an insulator is. Now, normally people use the analogy of electricity, voltage, and current. They use water flowing through a pipe. And I don't really like this analogy because it's kind of like thinking that lightning flows through a wire. You know, like if you have household wiring like this and electricity is flowing through it, you imagine lightning flowing through the wire. That's not really correct. And actually, it kind of makes things more confusing. Um, so the question is, what is a conductor and what is an insulator? Okay. Ah, I'm going to move you, so try not to freak out, okay? All right. Uh, so here we have uh, a mess. Um, okay, so this is our wire, right? I'm going to scooch some of this stuff. Uh, it's probably all going to fall over and make a big mess. Stay. All right. So here we have a wire, and the wire is uh, a conductor. It's copper. So let's see. Let's see if we get our little fancy wire strippers here. And we'll... How come I can't... Oh, that's because it's not the ones I'm, I'm used to, so... Right, so there's our... Let me put these back. Okay, so there's our... There's our, our copper wire, right? That's your conductor. That's your insulator. Okay, well, what is... What, what does it mean to be conductive? Like, how is a wire... Con why does this conduct electricity and this doesn't? Okay, so let's zoom in. And let's draw a picture and say we have, uh, this is, uh, we won't use blue. We'll use, yeah, we'll use blue. Okay, and we'll use blue and black and red. So if you zoom in on the copper, um, copper in its solid form is basically like a lattice of copper atoms. And, um, I, I, this is going to be kind of simplified, like greatly simplified, so just to kind of get the point across, so, you know, bear with me. Um, so you have, like, copper atoms, right? And you could say, we'll just draw them sort of generically. You have kind of like your your nucleus, you know, of your copper atoms and everything. And then uh, we'll draw this one a little bit differently. And then inside your uh, your your nucleus, you have... You have Neutron, neutrons and protons, we're just going to draw it as a couple dots because it just kind of makes things simpler. And I'm drawing this one on the end in different colors. You'll see why in a minute. It's, it doesn't really matter. It's just... And of course, we know that atoms look like, you know, we've got like, you know, the, the traditional like... This is a fine, fine drawing. My God. Beautiful. I'm just, again, this is kind of super generic, so let's just draw some electrons orbiting in different places, right? So we've got three there, got one here, one here, one here, uh, you know, they can be, they can be anywhere. They're, they're, um, basically you've got, uh, okay, so these are your incredibly poorly drawn atoms. <laughs> so... And these, these electrons are sort of like orbiting. These are kind of, you know, atoms are basically like miniature solar systems. It's an easy way to think about it. So um, in a conductor, what happens is 
the, the, the structure of a conductor is such that when this guy gets past an electron, uh, he kind of freely passes one on to his neighbor, you know? So, like, he, he'll, he'll get one, and then he'll go, Oh, I've got an extra one. Like, here, have an electron. And, and then, <clears throat> you know, she'll go like, Oh, my God, I didn't know. Like, you like, you like electrons, too? And he's like, yeah, they're awesome. Oh, here, wait, wait, here, hang on a second. And then she'll pass the electron on to him. And then these two will, like, go on a date because they had no idea that they were both interested in electrons. You know, so basically each atom... Um, a conductor has, uh, it gets really complicated, there's like energy bands and all this crazy stuff involved, but essentially all you need to understand is that you've got atoms in your conductor, and they, they, like, to, they like to pass electrons along to their neighbor. That's pretty much it. Now this guy, he's kind of special because we'll sort of draw a little blue box around him. He is, he is part of an insulator, right? Now he doesn't like to share his electrons. He's like, you know, uh, you know, like when you're a kid and you were growing up and there was like, you know, crabby, you know, Mr. Stinkmore who lived next door and he's like always yelling at you to get off his lawn, you know, when he'd come to the door with a shotgun and that kind of thing. That's basically an electrical insulator. Um, he doesn't like, you know, all the neighbors like to pass electrons along. Mr. Stinkmore, he's like, no way. Get off my lawn, you, you crazy kids, you know, and all that kind of stuff. So he does not, when, when this guy in the end tries to pass him the electron, he breaks out his shotgun and says, you know, get that away from me. So, oops, and hence current doesn't flow. So that's a conductor, that's an insulator. Right, pretty simple, right? Um, I just realized I have two blue markers. Hmm. Um, okay, so this whole passing along of electrons, you could, let me scooch this down so it's still visible, but not quite. Um, I have a, uh, of course, the the next question is, well, okay, but where'd this guy get his electron from, right? Because if this is if this is copper, uh, in its normal state, I mean, I've I've got a copper wire here, right? Nothing's happening, unless I actually apply uh, a voltage across these two. Uh, that's our first term, volts. Nothing happens because it's kind of in a steady state. It's only when the conductor gets past an electron, essentially from something else that suddenly it starts carrying it along. So this gets us to the topic of voltage. And I have I have a these are electrons and this is a wire. And you see we can peel back the insulation like we did here. But hang on, let me put some electrons in my in my wire. Because, you know, visual aids are good, so I figured instead of just drawing a picture, I'll kind of... Okay, our wire now has... Oh, it has too many electrons. Oh my god, electrons are going everywhere. So, we peel back the, the insulative layer, and what we get are... What we're going to get is a big mess, because I didn't really think... Oh, sweet Jesus! Come back! No, you... you okay. Alright, let's, let's just peel our insulator off. Okay, there... Okay. Whew! Okay! So, this is basically... Stay. I've peeled the insulative layer off, and you can imagine that this is a copper conductor, right? Okay, now normally, as I said, nothing happens. These little electrons, they stay there. But... If I add an electron to this end, what happens? Boink! They all pass an electron along, and an electron gets pushed out that end. Yay! That's exactly what we want. Um, and the thing that actually introduces an electron into this side, and pushes it out the other side, is a voltage. And all a voltage is, is a difference in electrical potential. So you can think of that as, uh, like, for example, here I've got a bag of electrons, and here I have an empty bag. There are no electrons. So when you have, say, a battery, like this guy, right, it's very simple, like, you've got your plus and your minus, and when you connect something across these two, you have electrons flow. Well, the difference in, you know, these battery terminals is essentially, you can think of it as, one's got a whole lot of electrons and the other has none, and where there are lots of electrons, they will flow to where there aren't any electrons. 
So basically, if we take this and we go like that, ta-da, your electrons will start flowing through here to fill up the bag, and that's essentially the equivalent of a battery. Ta-da, that's why your electrons flow. So when you look at this, you go, well, hey, I've got a lot of electrons here and I've got none here. That's a difference in electrical potential because electrons are negatively charged and this is basically, well, far less negatively charged, so it's relatively positive, so electrons flow. That's voltage. All it is is a difference in electrical potential. And it is that difference in potential, full bag of marbles, empty bag of marbles, that causes electrons to flow. Now, that's volts. The thing is that when you've got this difference in potential and the electrons start to flow, what you end up with is a current. So volts is the difference in potential, lots of electrons, not lots of electrons. And current is actually defined as a specific number of electrons flowing past a given point in a wire. So it's like actually, technically it's actually one coulomb per second. A coulomb is like a whole boatload of electrons. So if we use this little wire here and we'll say, we we'll use the wire, we'll say the, the red marker. If I'm, if I start monitoring and I see, okay, I'm, I'm looking at, at, uh, at this point in my circuit or in my wire, right? And there's a, there's a difference. There's a voltage across this. So electrons start going through. Oh my God, look, it's flowing. Uh, da -da 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 of course, I'm just reusing the same electron. But So past this point, when a certain number of electrons have flowed by, due to the difference in electrical potential, that gives you a current. That's all it is. So, okay, so that's voltage and current. But then, what the heck is a watt? Well, a watt is a measure of power. Um, your difference in potential is volts. It's measured in volts, like 230 volts, 120 volts, um, a 9-volt battery. Ta-da! Your, uh, the number of, the, the, the number of electrons flowing past a given point, uh, in, a, 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 in, in, say, one second, that's actually your current. And then power in watts is actually just voltage multiplied by current. So let's, uh, we can, we can sort of make that a little bit. Oh my God, I'm losing my, losing my marbles. Actually, let's, let's just turn him upside down. And all we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, so V equals voltage. And uh, usually you write current as I, so I equals current, and this is in volts, and this is in amps, and then you have P, which is your power, which is measured in watts, right? So when you have current, you, you apply a voltage, difference in potential, that causes a current to start flowing, number of electrons going past even point, and when you multiply the voltage by the current, you get the power. So, P equals V times I. Done. That's it. Or watts equals volts times amps. That's it. So if you say, uh, we'll, use, we'll use simple numbers. Um, if you say live in uh, Japan, where the voltage is, is often 100 volts, and uh, you have, uh, say you have like a, I don't know, like a, a hair dryer, right? And, you know, so you've got your, your voltage is, is equal to 100 volts, and your hair dryer has a rating of, say, 1500 watts, right? Okay, well, how much current is it pulling? Well, you can actually calculate that, because it's, in this case, it's very simple. So you already have your P equals VI. So if P equals VI, P equals VI, you want to solve for I, you divide both sides by V, and you get I equals P over V. Or I equals 
1500 divided by 100, we knock off the two zeros, so 15 amps. Ta-da! Now when you look at stuff, you can figure out how much current is being drawn, blah blah blah. And later on in the series I'll talk about circuit breakers and, and that kind of thing, so I'll get into that a little more. This is just kind of some simple math. This is one of the basic equations that you have to know, and it gives you a relationship between, you know, you have your difference in potential, you have your current, electrons flowing past a point, and, and now you have power. Okay, so there you have it. Volts, watts, amps. That's how it works. Now, <clears throat> the next thing you're probably wondering is, well, what's the difference between DC and AC? Because, of course, you know, if I have a, if I have a battery, uh, this is DC, the wall socket is AC, so what's the difference between those? Uh, I'll cover that in the next episode of Eek! Uh, if you have any questions, post them in the comments, and I'll make another video to explain it better. So, okay, thanks for watching.